for managerial accounting. But first, just a few announcements. Our payment and registration deadline coincides with that of the term 10 application. So payment and registration deadline will be the 26th of February. Next week, we will not be having a lesson, but Marathon Petroleum will be coming in to speak to us. We also are inviting several RSOs from the Computer Science Department. We should have a full house. It should be great. A really good presentation. Uh, they sound pretty excited to come speak to the CMU students. Uh, tomorrow is the ERB SIM competition. Uh, if you are participating, remember to dress well and represent your company well. Uh, it's a great day, big day. And if you are not participating, uh, thank you to all those who are volunteering. That's very helpful. We really appreciate it. Uh, and if you are not volunteering or participating, I highly advise you go just to see what it is, experience what the competition truly is when it's going on. I would especially encourage all of you to view the panel and listen to what they have to say. Some really interesting speakers coming this year. It's here, great day tomorrow. On Friday is a career day, um, so if any of those who are looking for a job and internship opportunities, that's a great place to go. Uh, so dress sharp and bring your I don't know what to say about that. Uh, our spring trip is scheduled for the 31st of March and April 1st. We'll be heading down to Nashville to visit A.O. Smith in Louisiana Pacific. There's a lot more information to come. A lot of us are preoccupied with the ERP SIM competition. So once that's over, we'll start developing a schedule when we'll be leaving, when we'll be coming back, and the events that we can participate in when we're down in Nashville. Um, any questions about any of that before we begin? Yes? Um, so for tomorrow's uh, DRP set, if you're not playing the team, please wear the um, SAP students if you publish your piece. And thank you. If you couldn't hear, uh, if you have your polos, you're going tomorrow, wear your SAP polos to tomorrow's event. Um, obviously, if you're participating, where your company's full of. Um, without further ado, Sarah will be presenting on controlling today. All right. So here's what we're going to be going over today. I'm just going over the basics of controlling organizational structure, which, as I mentioned last week, if you're here, you need to know the organizational structure for every single module that we cover. Those should be your three key points. Uh, the components of the managerial accounting. Uh, we're we'll going to the true and statistical objects, and then I made some more review questions like the last week. So basically, for controlling, this is another module that's super integrated within everything else. So just like financial accounting was. So we only really cover a little bit of it right now, and then the rest of it you'll see in other places, especially in production. That's a big one, that's controlling. So controlling is only concerned about costs and revenues. We do not associate it with like assets or liabilities, nothing that's from the bank balance sheet, only costs and revenues. and revenues. It's very interrelated with FI and also is only concerned about internal users. Like uh, as we talked about last week, financial accounting, only external people care about that. And really is the internal. So for our organizational structure, as always, we always put the client at the very top. And then we have the operating concern, which is a unique one to controlling. And that is the structure of external market segment. Basically, we use the operating concern as kind of a big tippy top view of everything, and it helps you to really look across the entire enterprise and look at the external market and see what they're doing. Um, then we have our controlling areas. You can have one or many assigned to the operating concern. These are your self-contained units for cost and revenue. And then once again, we have the company code, and that is the smallest uh, unit that can support a whole set of accounting books. Does anyone remember what the two things are that is required for a comp like multiple company codes to be attached to a controlling area? Fiscal year and operating card account. Nailed it. So there are five components of managerial accounting. I kind of like to look at it from the more broad focus and then narrow it down to be more specific. Um, each one of these areas are associated with a, a certain um, organizational structure. So we start off with profitability analysis, and this is the external profitability. Um, this asks the question of how profitable are we actually? And this is concerned with that operating concern level that we were just talking about, that unique thing to uh, controlling. Next, we have profit center accounting. That's going to be looking internally at your own self. You can kind of even think of it as like you, if the company has a bunch of little companies it. We're looking at what each one of these little companies are doing. Um, this is associated with the controlling area level. Next, we have product cost controlling. 
So that's going to be analyzing value added and, and processes. And that's asking pretty much just what are the costs that we're incurring throughout our processes that we're doing. And this is also at the controlling area level. Um, next, we have overhead cost controlling. This is looking at the origin of our costs. Where were they, where are they incurred? And this is, once again, at the controlling area as well. And then cost element accounting is a big one because this is the uh, bridge between financial accounting and controlling. And it's dealing with those costs and revenues. What is the identity of the cost? Which goes into the idea of uh, primary cost and secondary cost, which the next slide will be about. And then this is also at the, uh, this is at the company code level. So, so this is kind of the most specific. Primary versus secondary costs. Primary costs are the transactions strictly between the CFI and the CO, and they have a one-to-one -one relationship with the general ledger, and they will always retain the same identity. Secondary costs are the ones that are within controlling itself, so that could be from cost op two different cost objects. Um, let me see, I have an example I can probably draw it out somewhere. Because I actually have markers that work. So say this is your bank account, and then we'll also have maybe an inventory, or inventory expense. So say your bank, say it was $100 to buy some inventory, there's your expense. The primary cost here will be basically we have this cost object over here, and then this cost will go to this bucket basically, and it will match your expense account. And so this will happen for thing only for expenses and and uh, revenues. And then a secondary cost could be say you have another cost bucket and you want to move it over here. That's a, that would be a secondary cost. So then you also have true versus statistical objects. True will um, be the real cost, and they can act as the sending or receiving object. And then statistical are these things that are used only for reporting. It can kind of help you look at different areas within your company to kind of determine what, what's their profitability like, what are they doing. There are three objects that can be associated with statistical, um, op there's three statistical objects the profit center, internal orders, and projects. It's important to know that the profit center is only for statistical postings. The other two can be true with use for true cost as well. So we have any questions? I think I went a little fast there.
for a company to like keep track of costs for a large, over a period of time or for some very large anything. Uh, it could be yeah. ranging from a large production object or something they produce to uh, changing the company from structure wise. It's just a way to incur a long term cost and monitor investments that way. Yeah. They're not very specific. They can be a lot of different things.
well as to the Toronto Process era. <laughs> We'd like to make this as great of an experience as we can. Um, so if you guys have any tips for us as far as what you would like to learn and what we can change to better improve our lessons, we'd be happy to take them. And if there are specific questions that you'd like us to answer during any of our sessions, please ask it. Or if you know another time, email it and we can address it at a later time. Um, if we don't know the answer, which is very, very possible, uh, we'd be happy to go find it. Um, we're, we'd like to be a resource to all of you to help you prepare for the term. So, uh, with that being said, our emails are all over Central Link and things like that. So, just let us know improvements, things we can work on, or questions that you have that we can figure out for you. And if there are no more questions today, are there? About the church itself, year, future dates, anything like that? Yes? What percentage do you need to 51. So, if the term 10, uh, you'll be given an 80 question exam on a computer. The three hours, I believe, to complete it, uh, you will need to get at least 51% to pass. And if you get 50%, you will not pass. And also, can you post the slideshow Yes. Yeah, we If you fail it, you will have an opportunity to retake it. Um, now, this is one thing that I'm not 100% sure of. I believe you can take it two more times. Um, that's right? I think so, that sounds right. You get three, so in total, three opportunities to pass the exam uh, before either uh, what you can't do it for that. So I think, I think it is, until they update the testing app, basically, you can't take it. So every few years, they update the test. If you fail it two more times, you can leave number three, if you fail it three times, then you will need to wait until you um, with our professors and their ability to teach um, in our department, yeah, there's, I don't believe that any of one in this room will have a problem with that. Um, as long as you study hard and put the time, you'll have no problem with that. And they recommend, too, if you do have to fail it, they give you, they're able to take it pretty much like one week later for I think it's $500, which is unfortunate if you have to pay that again. But it's a better idea to take it right away instead of waiting, say, like if you're taking it in May and then you don't graduate a full year, just take it the week after because the information's fresh in your mind. This stuff will leave you pretty fast, unfortunately. Yeah. Maybe you can detail feedback about the questions you missed. Yes, well not detailed feedback, but instantly they will tell you a kind of a breakdown of each of the sections that are on there. So like uh, financial accounting, you got this percentage on it. It's just instant results. They don't show you any specific question that you submitted. They just tell you percentages based on the sections they invited in. I have a Who's going? All right, so I have an add on to that. If you did pass that, you'll get the 51%. Trust me, you don't want to know you care how much you have. Yeah, I was just curious. You said that it was mostly multiple choice, right? But it is all multiple choice. They have like the right. They have the freedom to put sure or false questions or I think short answer if they want to, but it's going to be multiple choice and multiple multiple <coughs> choice. I can't imagine they would put anything else. They have the right to do it. They just haven't done it. Any other questions about the exam? Uh, it seems pretty intimidating. I know I was very intimidated when I was approaching the exam. It's really kind of scared me going into it, but it is not as bad as, as, as it sounds. It's a lot to do, uh, but if you're committed to it and put the time, you don't really have anything to worry about as long as you yourself are committed to passing. I mean, the hours it takes to, to study after your class, the hours of prep before the class starts, um, and just the dedication to the exam itself, you will have no problem at all. Um, I promise you that. Yeah. One more. Uh, how long is like the class per day? Like you start at 8 a.m., uh, you have an hour lunch, into 5, so an 8 hour day with an hour lunch. Sometimes you get out early, every now and then. The last day we did a practice test, so we did like the first half of the day, you learn, you talk about HCM, and then the second half is a practice test, and then that doesn't usually take the whole, like, after lunch time. Yeah, so the, the layout, you'll Monday through Friday the first week, uh, you come at 8 a.m., you do your lessons all day, you have an hour lunch. Uh, sometimes there's a company that comes in and presents, 
and that wait in that case you would have your lunch paid for and you'll have a big uh, kind of a banquet style lunch over in powers um the other day you just have an hour to get lunch on your own and then at 5 p.m you're done on the final thursday before the exam you'll take a practice exam that has been devised by professor tracy uh, and at that point it gives you an idea of where you're at as far as where you stand going into the test um, in my experience, what I've heard is pretty accurate representation of what you will get on the exam. Mine was only 2% different from what I got in the practice to what I got in the exam. I think I was 6 or 8% difference. It's just a, a good way to show what you need to study on. Uh, every morning you come in, I do the thing, a quiz. That quiz is just over what you've covered up to that point. Um, so it gives you, you constantly know where you're at with regards to material learning what you need to focus on when you study, and what you have down for the most part. Um, it's very well structured. Um, it's, you know what you need to study and how to study for it. Yeah. Would you say that some parts are uh, weighted heavier than other parts on questions? Yes. Uh, they give you a little sheet at the first day of class, and it breaks down each section. It's either going to be like, it's, most of them are going to be like 12% of the exam. There's about four or five sections that are less than 8%. So, that's too bad. You kind of you do have a good understanding of which ones you really need to focus on more. The larger percentage of the portions of the exam, like the 12% or something like that, those are numbers that I don't know what to expect. In fact, those are a lot of the ones that are covered in class. Well, Anything else? Any questions for uh, the tier pen? I know we haven't really covered it as in depth this today previously to what the exam actually entails. All right. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to seeing all of you tomorrow at the ERP SIM competition. And we'll see you next week on Marathon Journal. <laughs>